The news and books are just not shocking enough to merit mainstream media attention unless they're bombshell tell-alls from former Trump staffers. Then, at least for me, all of a sudden, that Covington Catholic schoolboy MAGA hat versus Native American video hits the Twitterverse, and everyone wants me on. Finally, the hook. And it's an interesting little meme fest, of course. It's fun to dissect. It's really the story of what happens as you zoom out of a story from close-up to medium-long shot to the whole scene. So what at first looks like some MAGA kid menacing a Native American, it becomes a seasoned Native American activist setting up this Catholic schoolboy. And then eventually you pull back a little more and it reveals itself to be a Native American intervening in a conflict between black Israelites and this group of kids, at least so far anyway. And it's a little troubling that my favorite news shows only want me on when it's to explain a sensationalist, social media-generated cultural fart. But what matters to me more is that so many of my friends, and worse, so many respected journalists, intellectuals, activists, others, thought to tweet and retweet and comment on this story before they had any idea what was going on. They were not there. So yes, I saw the tweet in my feed from one of the people who retweeted the truncated version of the video spawned by some fake news account in Brazil. And I had a few really clever, nasty things to say myself about the apparent confrontation, but I took my own advice for once, and I did not respond. I took a breath, and I waited, and I didn't do what the platform is programmed to make me want to do. So I accepted the possibility that I was looking at a real video, and that there was a social injustice going on that needed to be called out, but that it could also nonetheless be fake news, that maybe I didn't really know from looking at a minute of video what was going on, that it might not be any more real than any of the stitched together reality on the tube right now. And that's what reality TV really is, we all know, right? They use real footage, but they cut it together to say whatever they want. It's why reacting to decontextualized pictures is so dangerous. If anything, we're living in a media landscape where whoever can most convincingly say what a picture really is, wins. Are those refugees? No, they're terrorists. No, actually they're rapists. Whoever names the meme wins the meme. That's why we can't respond to photos on a news feed. We can only react. This is raw footage. We're not there. It may be compelling to look at, particularly if it triggers our knowledge of real racism, oppression, and violence. But this is also why we have real journalists on the ground skilled at investigating a story and determining what happened so we don't have to rush to judgment and then amplify confusion. So what if I don't find out about what happened until an hour later? Instead of getting drawn into righteously indignant online substitutes for social justice activism, let's go out into the real world and fight the injustices we actually see all around us. And if we really want to work on problems occurring beyond our physical location, let's get the facts from professional journalists. Of course, come to think of it, Professional journalists sometimes get it wrong, too, and that's perhaps the biggest concern. There's a lot to digest here, and I'm, but what I do know for sure is that I think there's a lot to learn about the structural biases of our media and how these dynamics shape our perceptions of world affairs.